What is going on, party people? It's your boy, Uncle Jim. Welcome to Assorted Characters Podcast, episode number four. Really great episode for you guys this week. Kind of on the shorter side, but nonetheless, still very good. Got my new friend, Say Less, went over to his garage studio. Had a lot of fun having a good conversation with him about music, about his record label, and about just a whole slew of other things. If you enjoy music, if you enjoy listening to people talk about their hustle, about their success, this is a great episode for you. So go ahead and listen close. It's real, real good. Thank you guys for watching as always, and please enjoy. Do you want to live as an untold story? Rather go out in a place of glory. All right, what's going on, everybody? Assorted Characters episode number four. Got the new homie Say Less here in the house. I'm actually in his house, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Had to travel a little bit for this episode, but I'm actually really looking forward to this because... This is going to be the first episode where I got a genuine guest, somebody who I haven't met before, <laughs> which is dope. But thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate no it. It's dope. So I don't, I, Spencer was asking me in the car, you know, do you, what do you want to know about him? And I'm like, I don't want to know nothing because I wanted to sit down. And I wanted to have a genuine, like, because I don't know anything, you know? So first, my first question is, how old are you? Because I, when, I, when I was driving, I was like, I figured you'd be like an older guy, not older, but like, I figured you'd be older than Spencer and myself. Mm-hmm. And you have some experience in this, but like you got some shit going on right now. So how old are you? So I'm I'm 21. I'm old. that's super impressive, dude. <laughs> that's super fucking impressive that you got this shit going on and you're as young as you are. Like, how did this all happen? Like how did this start? So um, I'll just take it back to um, high school. I was always into like a business. Mm-hmm. Started like a okay. I'm gonna go back back. Go ahead. Um, I got in trouble with some legal difficulties. My family wasn't like the most financially, you know, mm-hmm. up there. And um, I wanted to get some money um, for my family because we were struggling. It was actually on the brink of being homeless. And what I did was um, I just reached out to some people like, hey, can you crack my card or whatever? Um, tried to get the money off. Police was right there. Um, and I ended up owing um, a certain amount of money. Then that's when, like, my... Um, entrepreneurship went off and I had to get that money myself. So what I did was I started out doing um, like a candy cartel at the school, um, having people work with me to um, sell candy around the school. Um, Then that went into me having a graphic design business right out of school, um, going into college. Um, So more out of necessity than like desire, right? So like some shit's going on this money needs to happen right now. So it started as candy. So you would like, you'd be the kind of dude who goes to like, you know, Costco or some shit, buys a bulk of candy and you come back to the school and you sell everything for a dollar, but you bought the box for five. Right. That kind of deal? Right. All right, cool. And then the graphic design thing happened. Was that just you like fucking around or was that like, oh, I need a, a, a label. I need a picture. Like, was that something like that? So that was me, you know, fucking around with it. Um, yeah, it was just that. Then people were seeing my logos and stuff. It's like, oh man, can you do something for me? Mm-hmm. Um, then I started working with people like um, um, Willie Wilson and um, Harold's Chicken. Um, okay, cool. I actually made their logo for their basketball team that they got going. Um, but all of that started um, from that small incident. Well, it was huge to me because it was like a federal. Yeah. So that was huge. And then. Um, so were you looking at time? Like, you don't have to talk about that if you don't want to, but were you looking at like. Some I was, kind of shit going on, or was that more of like a low key, like, hey, it'll go away in a little while? It was, it was, uh, it'll go away. Okay. Um, Cause I got to expunge. So, you cause know. me and Spencer got in some trouble a couple of years back, mm-hmm. and it, there was never a like, oh, we're going to do time moment. Was that like scary for you, like getting that figured out, or was it like, it's going to be all right? Man, um, that that was that was scary for me. Was scary. I was like, yeah, you know, my future is gone. This and that. Yeah, that's how we felt. It was kind of like a moment of like, bro, like it was a reality check for us. Yeah. For sure. Now, the music thing, when did that start popping off? Was so that that was, man, well, I started music my junior year okay. um, with some of my friends in a play. We were just messing around in a play, and it was like, okay, well, we have this this rap section. You think you could put, like, a few bars together? And I was like, sure, why not? And, you know, we wrote. Everybody went. It was my turn. I never written before anything. And it was just like, man, this actually has content, and it, it makes sense, and it's only, like, a few bars. Right. Um, then I just left that alone at that, uh, my cousin, just in case Mm -hmm. he came in, I think, uh, what, November? Yeah, it was November. 
he came in, he saw the garage because it was nothing like this. It was like yeah. it was like an apartment um, for me. I, I had the garage to myself, and he was like, "Man, you know, I make music now and this and that, and I see you doing this. Um, you got the business aspect. What if we make a um, a record label?" I was just like, "Sure, why not? This would be my you know third business going into it." Right. Um, so then I was like, "I." Right, this is what we got to do. Gave him like the map. He gave me some information. Well, a lot of information. Um, we we got a team, and then uh, we just started, you know, fucking up to get what we got. Yeah. So All right, cool. that's how that started. So I understand, like, so it was just kind of again, kind of an accident. You kind of stumbled into the whole music thing, where it was like, oh, I, I'm kind of good at this. Let me see how that happened. How did the label? like pop off because i know that you've now got people coming to you like hey i want to record some shit i need some, some studio time how did that happen so the label the the panda that you see was supposed to be a, another clothing line that i had because okay. one is on um, bougie bunny which is what i'm wearing and then i wanted to make something more for just like guys like mm -hmm. you know cool kids so i made the panda with the shades on and then i just left it alone uh, then i never I, really came back to yeah it. never came back to it until um uh, just in case said that uh, we needed a we need a logo and i was just like well the panda got disc on his ears and you know it, it, it has a nice meaning behind it and then we just made that you know that label then um after we built the booth and stuff uh we made our songs oh they were so trash low quality and everything but um now did you start off with just some like basic ass quality microphones and, and stuff like that or was that like you mean the quality was trash in terms of the content the the quality as far as um what we were doing we didn't know how to okay. engineer it okay all. cool like we started out with the most expensive mic in um in guitar center we had all right, good yeah so we we got the most expensive stuff but it's like we didn't know how to use we it. we didn't know how to use it right okay so uh, it you, took it took me like hibernating in this booth all winter to um master the sound that i have now okay so and what was building the booth like? Was that just like, hey, how do you build a booth? And then you did it. Was it something like that? Or was this another trial and error thing where you're like, I don't know how to do this, but I'll figure it out. So um, we have a lot of uh, creative people in our family. Um, and we have some low, um, you know, constructors and stuff like that. So we had our uncle actually build the booth and okay. our auntie wire some stuff in. So that was just that. Uh, and we had to pay them, of course, but there was no issue with that because they yeah. had they built the booth before. So okay, we cool. just use that. So you kind of have people around you that were like, "Hey, I know how to do X. I know how to do Y," and you brought all that together to make Pandora kind of what it is. You know, you had the graphic design. Just in case had kind of the vision. Mm -hmm. Auntie, uncle, they can build a booth, and then you kind of sitting alone, like you said, hibernating for the winter, and that became, you know the engineering side. Yes. So it's all these kind of minds coming together to form, you know, what you have here. And that's really cool. I, I always like hearing stories like that where it's not one person hitting it big because nobody does it on their own, right? right? Nobody ever does it without any help. So I always love hearing those stories where someone actually gives credit like, oh man, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing right. until, you know, so-and-so showed up and helped me have this vision, right? So that's actually really cool. Now I understand you, you've kind of been to school with some people that did musical stuff. Tell me about that. Were, was there a lot of people in your school that did that kind of shit, like your friends, or was that like they dabbled in it, but I was the one really fucking with it? Um, I had nothing to do with music. Um, I didn't even know I could sing until someone told me, like, oh, you can't rap, um, but, you know, try singing. And, you know, did that. Um, oh, my gosh. Let me think. Everybody at Prairie State, which I attended, did music. Like everybody, and I'm just like, you know, that's that's cool, that's what's up. Um, but you know, I'm gonna stay with the graphic design and stuff like that. Right. If you need logos done or you need a flyer done for your music, I got you. Um, then that's when like Justin came in and really helped me out, mm -hmm. um, getting the music down because that's when I just started looking deeper into it. Okay, how many songs do you have? I have, I would say, twenty plus songs. Twenty plus, okay. Yeah. And did you have like it on a collection or is that just kind of single, 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 single? So I have one EP okay. um, dropped. It is Don't Trip, Say Less. Um, then I have, I believe, three singles out. I like that. Don't Trip, Say Less. All right, cool. And then three singles on top of that. Yes. Okay. That's nice. That's good shit. 
So I understand now that your next move is you're moving out to LA. Is that a permanent deal or is that going to be, let's test these waters, let's see what's going on? I want it to be. Okay. Um, the environment that I'm in is really holding me back. It's like... I feel that. Um, if you're going Say less, to... I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, if you're in your... If you're in your hometown, nobody's going to respect you because you're still in your hometown. Um, it's like when you leave, you make something out of yourself there, then you come back and that's when they respect you. Because that's where everybody's at, right? Right. If you do something there, everyone knows what's up. It's kind of the big fish in a small pond type mm -hmm. deal. You're making some noise out here. Oh, yeah, whatever, man. Like you, You're fucking up, but you're not really doing anything spectacular. You go out there and you make some noise. Now everybody's like, hmm. He's he's good. He's doing something. So, are you going with a team? Are you going by yourself? What's the deal with that? So, my intention was to bring um, the team with me. Um, a lot of that changed when you know we still have to build more here right. and um, for sure in Chicago. So, um, two of us will be going out there, but I know the team will still be building. Now, here. who's going? It's you and it's me and Leah. Okay, um, and check her workout too. I love her vibes. Okay, um, she kind of helped me on. A few songs that I've, I've done, um, her vibes alone just like motivated me to make my music. So check her out. Now, what are you doing out there? Is it going to be much of the same, like making more music, meeting more people? Is that the deal? Or is this more of like a change of scenery and a new environment? Like what's, what's, the, what's the vibe going to be with the move? So with Organic Vibes, it's, it's, it is a web series. Um, it'll be from oh you're doing a like a documentary type thing with this move yes that's cool too okay yeah, so that's gonna be a web series and it's gonna have um eight artists um from different parts of america just um showing their talents um, and you've connected with them via the youtube game mm -hmm. via instagram whatever okay cool. yeah they um they they i saw their flyer like try out um send in the interview or um send in a one minute you know about yourself and it was just like yeah we like you we want you um, just like they did with Leah. So you're a part of that. So you two are going to be a part of this larger series. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll have to check that out then. That'll be cool. That'll be super cool. All right, so with the LA thing, the other the other question I have is when you're out there, you know, are you trying to network with people or definitely. is the main goal? Okay. Yeah, definitely um, networking because uh, this, this game, and I'm just going to like take out a lot of gems. Like people can take gems from me if they want, but it's, it's more so networking than the actual talent nowadays. Oh, I, sure. I was just blessed to have, you know, a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> but more so um, the networking. Because... It's more so, you know, you hit one and then you meet people, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to have a little talent to make one mm -hmm. happen, whether it's, you know, Lil Nas or whatever, you know. Hit one with the Old Town Road, now you're making songs with Cardi B, like he kind of did. You know right. what I mean? You need one, but after that, everyone wants to fuck with you. You Definitely. get one song that everybody hears – now you're on, right? Because, so for you, yeah. that's kind of got to be what it's like. It's like, let's keep grinding the music, but at the same time, keep those ears open and you know see what happens in that regard, right? Definitely, because um, one thing is everybody music sucks until you have that one. Right, exactly. And then when you have that one, everything they look back on is a perfect song. So, right. you know, um, it, it does take that one, like you said. That's super true to say, that you say it like that. Like, oh, everybody sucks until, oh, then you hit that one. Now you're backlogged collections. Oh, that's all good dope. Right. Because nobody, you know, I, I hate to say it, nobody wants to see somebody succeed. Nobody wants to, because that means I couldn't do it, right? right. If you get big, right, now Spencer didn't do it and now he's resentful, right? Mm -hmm. and that's, people are so cruel in that manner where it's like you can't be glad for someone's success because you weren't able to do it. But once you do hit it big, it's like, oh, I knew that guy, I knew that guy, I knew that guy. You know, we were friends back in the day, right? Oh, his music's so dope, check it out, because they're trying to, you know, come on your coattails. You know and what I mean? That's why I tell people to, um, the, the road to success is to get out that environment that mm -hmm. you've been in so yep. long. I haven't left Illinois uh, when it came to, like, music and stuff. So Now, you've been um, out of the state before, but not, mm -hmm. not in terms of the, of the music. Yes. So, so have um, you done shows? I've done shows. I've done shows with um, – I did a show with Queen Key, um, Corporate. Um, I did shows with Good Kids, Mad City. It's a great organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's youth making um, awareness to um, these this gun violence and – you know, political issues. Mm -hmm. So it was it was great to be on. Especially on out here, that. man. This was, yeah. this was a bad weekend for us. Super, man. This last weekend was bad for us, you know. So I, I'm a little out of the out of the area, but mm -hmm. I mean when you hear about it it breaks your fucking heart because at the same time, you know, this is the city that, you know, my sports teams are in. I hang out downtown a lot. When you hear about it it breaks your heart because no matter who it is, no matter where in the country it is, it's fucked up. 
Yeah. You know? So you always want to see organizations like that succeed. You always want to see people making activist changes because it's, you know, it's good for everybody. Now, to kind of get away from the interview, I had a couple of questions for you. The first mm -hmm. question I had was, who would you say your biggest inspiration is sonically? Prince. 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 Really? I did Prince. not see that coming. Yeah. You like you know, Purple Rain type dude? See, yeah, so it is uh, Purple Rain. I saw the symbol on the wall, so that's yeah. why I, 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 I thought about it. Um, it his, um, everything about him is just different. The vibe. The vibe the is like, he, he, he is himself, like... Um, and that's why I wanted to make a, a, a record label for independent artists. Mm -hmm. So then you can express yourself. They, you know, a record label will put you in a costume and just throw you out there. But it's like, be who you are because when you, who you are, you can relate to other people really. Right. So, you know, right. When you become a commodity, when you become somebody else's packaged and wrapped up version of music, you're no longer able to relate to people that are normal, right? When you are the industry, Nobody else is the industry unless you're in the industry, right? So when you become that packaged, uh, inauthentic version of yourself, you're no longer fucking with people that are normal, right. right? So it's super weird to see when artists, you know, especially when they are underground and then they explode. It's like, what the fuck happened here? What happened you know, to the whole sound that you had you know, right. a little while ago? What what happened to that? And what happens is money gets involved, dude. You know, money is the root signed. of all evil. They yeah. get signed. And now, you know, now that you're on the label, you got to do what we say. You got to right. make songs this way. You got to do this. And it's so, I think that's the most toxic part about music, about Hollywood, about anything. Because when you look at these indie artists, they're able to make whatever the fuck they want. You know, and the minute you get signed, it's it's not you, it's us. It's our money now. And I, I think it's the um, the lack of support. If, if indie mm -hmm. artists have so much more support from themselves or the other artists that they, they meet, um, that's why it's so good to network when you're at these um, open mics or these venues because um, you can relate to each artist and not feel like um, nobody's on your back, um, right. nobody's pushing you. So now right. I got to get signed. So then right. um, I have to do what it takes to get this money. If we have to support from yeah. each and every artist that if everybody through. can kind of come together, right? It, you know, what, what's the what's the phrase? Rising tides raise all ships or some shit. Like right. everybody succeeds, and that's why I hate this whole idea that. If one person's successful, it takes success from somebody else. You know, if you blow up, everybody should be happy that, oh, he did it, right? Everybody should be happy, oh, say less, made some shit out of himself. Because that should push everybody else to do better. That means Chicago's getting put on the map some more. Mm -hmm. That means that, you know, independent artists are getting put on the map some more. Nobody should be upset that one person succeeded when they did it. Because it just means that there's more room for this area of people to blow up, right? So I hate that idea that, you know, one person succeeds, oh, that means I can't do it. It, that's not what it means. It's, it's the exact opposite. It means that right. you have a better chance now because people are going, oh, this kid blew up from Chicago. You know, oh, he's on whatever label. I want to get in on that. Who else is in Chicago? Can I go out there and find, you know, some right. people? Oh, let me meet him. And, oh, how do you know any other uh, talented <laughs> people? And then you're like, oh, I know this guy named Justin. He's great. Right. You know, Justin gets big. You know what I mean? So it, it, yeah, it's that it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know, now mm -hmm. somebody knows you, now they're bigger too, right? So I think. It's so toxic. It's just, yeah. it's just so toxic. Man. Now, you're not into like the hip hop. You're more into the. You're a singer. Yeah, I'm more so a singer now. But it's like I do everything. You do everything. All my music is different. Um, the first songs I made are all rap. Um, then I just went into singing a little bit. But it's going well a lot. But it's going to be more so whatever I want. Like there's no box with me. That's what I'm trying to Don't go for. Don't put me in a box. Don't right? put me in a box. Right. And that's so. important too. Don't. Music people have broken down into genres, right? And that's that's weird. That's weird to me. Yeah. Because music's just a collection of sounds, right? It's not like movies where it's like, oh, visually that's an action movie. I know what that is, right? With music, you can make a country song that sounds like a rock song. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be broken down into any one particular genre. So when I see artists like uh, you know, Chance did this very early on, blend you know, Kanye was first, mm -hmm. blending a lot of different sonic styles into one kind of genre, that was huge, right? Early yeah, on. That. And you know, now now everybody does that. You know, you can't make a well, what's J. Cole say? You can't make a platinum song without a melody now because that's kind of what's become the norm, right? You can't just come out with a bunch of bars and think you're gonna make a good song anymore, which yeah. is kind of how hip hop started. And now you're getting those like singer, songwriter, rappers. Who, who's the kid, Spencer? The 18. I used to live with my parents. Who's that kid? I'm still 18. Khalid. 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 He's kind of done that shit. Yeah. Where, like, 
it's hip hop inspired, but or uh, Frank Ocean. Yeah, you know? nah, that's yeah, that's a good one. You know what I mean? Blending all of these different styles together into a more collective genre, and I think it's kind of become its own genre now. Yeah, right. Um, like it's more, it's more so now a religion. Yeah, if you think about it, it's more mm -hmm. so a religion now, because uh, a lot of people are really quoting um, songs like their scriptures. And that's it, a good yeah. It, it helps people um get through their day more than yeah. you know a Bible and and like, people are shaming for saying stuff like that, but it's it's so true. Somebody can quote a song in a minute, and yeah. then you you bring up a versus Bible you don't know any Bible, you don't, you don't, you don't know a yeah. damn Bible verse versus you know ten billion verses from Kanye or from whoever, right? right? You know every bar the man ever 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 said on a, on, a, on a song, right? So no, I hear what you're saying with that because it is important for people to hear music, especially from people that are like them. Right, right. You know, I know Kanye's kind of lost his way a little bit in terms of the uh, the craziness recently. But back in the day when he was doing graduation, college dropout, all that shit, everybody was like, "This is a dude who was a a nerd in a bad situation." You know, and people resonated with that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where it was like, "He's like me." You know, now it's a little different, but people need that. And what you're saying is absolutely true. They need that like almost religious aspect of like, I need somebody who understands what right. I'm going through. And can put that in a lyric, right? Whether you're white, whether you're black, what you know, whoever you are, wherever you're from, music is that universal language. And I think we need that now, right? More than ever, you know. And you know, this was a couple of weeks ago, but I, I saw it on Instagram earlier today. You know, when Nipsey got killed, everybody was talking about you know what he did for the community out in in Los Angeles, and you know, with the with the Crips and the Bloods and all the all the gang violence and how he was trying to squash that shit. They're talking about doing some. Lakers jerseys mm. as a tribute to him in like blues and, and reds and stuff like that. And it's just, it's so important that we get artists that are trying to close these divides because yeah. nowadays we're more divided than ever. Yeah. Racially, religiously, politically. It's so important that we start saying like, hey, like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all one people. Right. And it's so important that we get people that are spreading that message. So I really appreciate you coming on, man. It's no been problem. a good time talking to you. Thanks yeah, for coming yeah. on. That is the Sword of Characters podcast, episode number four. Check out the homie Say Less. I'll have a link to his channel, whether it's Pandor. Uh, you got a personal channel? Or yeah, I have, like a, I have a personal channel as well. All so. right, cool. I'll link all that stuff in the description. Thank you for coming on, man. I no really problem. appreciate your time. Awesome.